What's happening, everybody? This is your old pal, Waz, and this week we're going to do something we haven't done in a long time. I got my good friend Liam here who talked about the Boston Bruins last time, so we're going to talk about this year's Boston Bruins team. Liam? Hey, what's happening? Pretty much, yeah, it's going to be a good, um, you know, I'm going to be excited for this one because there's been two years that has been passed by and we have not done this show again, so I've, there's been a lot of stuff that's been happening with the Bruins. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, last year, they went all in, uh, draft picks, uh, got some great players, and uh, and choked in the first round. Yep. Greatest record of all time in Boston history, and choking in the first round against the Florida Panthers of all team, who, though, at that time had gone out and picked up Matthew Kachuk, and he also had Carter Verhage and you know, a few other big names that actually really helped in for their run. Yeah, but they, like, took us out. We were the number one seed, and then they took out, what was it, Toronto, who was the number two seed. I mean, they fought to get to that championship, so I, I wasn't mad that we lost them. I was mad, but I was like, they they took out another team that was really good, and they, and they got all the way, and they almost they actually almost won the whole thing. So, you know, props to them, but, you know, I, I'm still a diehard Bruin fan. Yep, nope, same here. And, I mean, granted, yeah, good on the Florida Panthers, but at the same time, you know, that should have, been, like, been the year to cap off for Mar- Marshy. Bergeron, Krejci, you know, just, you know, the guys that just, two guys that have retired this year, and now, you know, now we're in this whole phase of who's going to be the next big gun, like who's going to be the guy that's going to be first line center for us, and, you know, Zaka and Coyle have, like, proven a case, but, you know, there's still chances out there and free agency to go out and get somebody. Yeah, 100%. I, I, I'm honestly looking at our team, and uh, a center is a very big weak spot. Uh, another top-line defenseman would be nice. Uh, we picked up uh, Peak, but he's not a top-line defenseman. Does block a lot of shots, though. Yeah, th- I mean, that is the good thing, but the the one thing I'm worried about with him is the fact that he's usually on the ice. He's a, He was a minus 41 over in Columbus. I mean, granted, Columbus is not that great of a team right now, even though they have star-studded talent with Boone Jenner, and Johnny Grudor, Johnny Hockey, you know, it's definitely like coaching wise, definitely a problem over there. And it has been for the past, you know, four years. And it's kind of funny how it all gone downhill after sweeping Tampa Bay, who literally got 62 wins that season, 2019. And, you know, went ahead and, you know, just blew it just like us. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, like you were saying, like they were, they were benching peak. Like he wasn't even playing. He was like healthy scratches. So like, I'm like, uh, what are we getting here? I mean, is this just like some kind of trade to get somebody? I mean, just to show that we did something, if that's the case, you shouldn't have done nothing. At that point. Yeah. Uh, I definitely thought the same thing, but you know, at the same time, maybe the moral will flourish over Columbus. I mean, he's going to most likely be on that top second line, maybe, maybe third bump line. But you never know. But yeah, Peak is just one of those guys that, that was clearly a seventh defenseman pickup, pretty much for the team. Yeah, I'm uh, definitely sitting there looking at. It. I like the Pat uh, Maroon pickup. I do. He's he's a tough guy. We need a tough guy. We're kind of soft. I mean, other teams are picking on us, so I do like that pickup. And he like went to the Stanley Cup three times and won it. So I mean, and he fought with us numerous times. He was our enemy. So the, you know, the enemy of our enemy is our friend. So. No, exactly. And the funny thing is him saying, you know, that he's hated here. And it's like, yes, he is. But um, you know what? You're brewing. You put on that spoke B, we're going to love you. And especially after the whole mess with Lucic and whatnot, we needed that big body to come in and just start laying out people. So that way our star players don't have to like really do or have to worry that much. Yeah. And what is it? We just recently like broke records of like the amount of overtimes we've gone in and lost. <laughs> yeah. It, that's, oh my God. It, I can't believe how many times we have gone overtime against, you know, decent teams, granted, you know, but it's still like we have so much talent on this team. We should be able to win a 3v3 hockey game. Yeah, what's making me mad is like we go into overtime. Yeah, we do because we're blowing leads, like a three-goal lead, a two-goal lead, and then like all of a sudden we're in overtime and we lose. I'm like, well, how are you doing this? Like I go to bed and I'm like, oh, we're up, we're up by three goals. And then I wake up and they're like, oh, they went into overtime and lost. I'm like, what? What? Again? So that's the only thing that's pissing me off. No, same here, and especially when it's something like, um, especially low-scoring games. That has been the problem. We have had too many low-scoring games, and we need somebody on that offense to start potting in goals from the third and fourth line. Because, you know, at times it's either Marshy, Pasta, Zaka, Coyle, or, you know, barely any of DeBrusk. <laughs> That's the, another guy that we're, like, th- thought was going to be traded this year. And, you know, I usually don't listen too much to the rumors, but, you know, at this point, he has not performed 
the way he should right now. No, uh, you know, DeBrusque wanted to be traded before, and then this year I'm like, you know, we could have got rid of him. I'm not I, – I, I like our team, but I don't like our team to go all the way. I think, like, we're a team that might do – Maybe good in the first round, but then I don't know about the second round. We're not deep, and I think that's going to hurt us in the long run. Yeah, it definitely will hurt us, but also, you know, we'll see what happens as well. I mean, it depends on who we get to. Right now we're in second place. You know, Florida has taken the top place, so they're taking a wild card team. Our best bet is probably going to be Toronto, and we've had very good success against them and for the past 13 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we just beat them um, – they got what is it? Petrucci's on their team, and like I hated to see him go, but he's not really doing anything over there. So, yeah, and that was actually one of those signings that I wish we uh, actually did and kept him around. But yeah, he's he's not that great right now either, and he's kind of over underperforming compared to what his contract is paying him. So. Yeah, hundred percent. I did see something I like, I really did agree with. Um, we were talking about the two um, goaltenders. You know, we got Swayman and. Um, what's his name? Linus Elmark. So, like, the thing is, do, do you have two goalies in the playoffs? No, you have one. So, you got Swayman, who's going to probably be the starter, and you got Elmark on the bench. So, you got this great goaltender, but he's just sitting there. You could have traded him for someone that would be playing and and helping the, the team, and I agreed with that. But Elmark did block a trade, but so they did try, but... I agree with the fact that you know him sitting on the bench during the playoffs is not something we need. We needed someone that could actually be a participant in the playoffs, and I'm kind of sad that they didn't get that done. Yeah, I kind of am too, but at the same time, I'm also one of those guys that actually likes the goalie tandem. I'm happy with him staying here as long as he stays healthy. And, you know, honestly, at this point, I think Montgomery is going to go two goalies. He's going to flip-flop them during the time to keep them both healthy and not risk an injury, especially after last year. And, yeah. and you know, Swayman has proven his point of, hey, I could be a starting goaltender and get paid big bucks. So please, look at me like that instead of a backup. And that's why he's definitely gotten more of the starts and just pretty much have done, you know, what they can to win games, and especially him. Yeah, I 100% agree. I mean, he's definitely shown like that he could be the starter and get it done. Um, I like Brad Marchand stepping up and being the captain. I, I think he's done a great job. Um, he's toned down a little bit, I think, like and actually is focusing on like trying to win games and not like, you know, be the crazy person that he was, like, you know, doing crazy stuff. So I like that. Yeah, especially licking people. That, those days are over. There's no more Marchand licks, you know, Callahan or anything like that. So... I am too. I mean, he was the close candidate anyways. Like, there was no way anybody else would get it. Honestly, like, McAvoy probably was the close second, but, you know, Marshy only has two more years. He he probably doesn't have much in the tank left because he's gotten hip surgery and a bunch of other ones. So, you know, he just wants to win and definitely bring home another cup in Boston so that way he can retire at least, you know, happy. He wishes, though, he could do it with Bergeron and Krejci, but, you know... Their bodies can't hold up to it anymore, and I don't blame them. But Pasenak has been going to be truly a great leader too. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And like I hear, like you know, everybody's like, "Oh, bring back, bring back um, Patrice Bergeron, bring back Krejci," and I'm like, "They're done. Leave them alone. They they don't want to come back. They 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 came back last year because honestly, we were stacked and we should have won it last year. And they did that. They came back hoping that that would happen. And, like, how many times are they going to keep on doing it? You know, are they going to come back again next this year because, like, we might win it? Or are they going to come back next year because we might win it? No. Look, they did their time. They played. They tried. They, they, they realized they had to hang it up. So that's what they did. And props to them. No, oh, exactly. And they're going to go down as Bruins grades. The, the records are up there with all the other ones like Bobby or Phil Esposito, Johnny Busek. So, you know, this right now is going to be rebuild time and or, you know, see what Sweeney's going to do. Because so far, after last year, now we have no draft pick, so we can't really draft a center. And honestly, it's like we probably have enough, you know, great talent that we could have probably maybe traded up in the draft this year. But, you know, we'll see what happens. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully, crossing the fingers of not a first-round exit. Yeah, you know, I'd like to see us win the whole thing. If we don't, then I honestly think Almark will be traded at the end of the year um, for draft picks or uh, a center. I think he's definitely going to be gone. Um, they tried to trade him th during this last trading period, and uh, I think, you know, he'd like to stay. He loves being a Boston Bruin. I, I 
think they tried to trade him, I want to say California, and he was like, I don't want to go to California because his family's over here. His family's in Boston. He loves Boston area. But I think more of a realistic trade like to maybe like a New York team or a Jersey team or something in this region, I don't think he'll block. I think it was just the fact that it was such far away from where his family is. That's why he said, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I think I read that um, actually he does have like a 16-team no-trade clause kind of thing, And but I think it was the LA Kings. And I think... It's just more speculation and rumor of what it is. We won't know until the off season, like the whole details. But what if I've seen, it was with Pierre Luc Dubois. So LA is already trying to cut him in his contract, and we're just way too over in the cap space for that in the first place. Sweeney would have had to make another move. So realistically, I would have taken Andre Kempe. That would have been probably the other guy that we could have taken. Yeah, but they probably would have done Almark for that guy, and then probably traded um, Dubrovsk. They would have probably got rid of those two contracts and brought that guy in. Uh, yeah, they could have probably definitely done that, or either that or Forbert. You know, yeah. instead of putting him L- L- LTIR, he pretty much at this point, I've been kind of singing for it for the past couple of years. But he's great on the penalty kill. Don't get me wrong, but he is just a big body that's been injured and is just a liability on the ice, and has been pretty much on the ice for most goals. Yeah, I think like the whole thing with the Bruins is the next couple of years it's going to be really tough because we forfeited our, our future for that one year and like it's going to be a lot of rebuilds a lot of like scrambling and scrapping and trying to get people in, get under the salary cap and you know so i mean this year i mean if we can if we can do it i'll be excited i mean it'll be awesome um i'm not holding like my breath on it but it would be exciting for me to see us do it but then after that i'm kind of like oh yeah it's going to be a rough couple of years with uh, the the uh, spoke guys uh, not looking forward to it no exactly and especially when Marshan's contract is up in the next couple of years he could end up retiring or he can end up playing for maybe one or two years you know do the same thing Bergeron did take a cheap contract try to rebuild just a little bit by the side with the salary cap and just you know go for it again but yeah no they could do Ray Bork and just, he'd go to another team that's actually a contender and win it yeah uh, that would be definitely next season kind of thing because yeah. we can get draft picks out of him i there's no way he's not a first round or second round like draft pick, you know, person. He will definitely bring on another great young kid, but we're definitely getting draft picks. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's, it looks like a rebuilding year. I mean, in the next couple of years, uh, this year we didn't go all in, but we had a lot of talent on our team, and we did pick up. Like I said, we picked up Maroon, we picked up Peak. So I, I want to see what they can do. And Lynn Holm came back from injury, so like we. We are like almost at full strength right now, so that's going to be interesting. For the playoffs are right there, and to be healthy going into the playoffs is going to be key for us. And um, that might be something that like could actually benefit us as if other teams stop falling off. No, exactly, yeah. And Vegas, like they are, they got trades so they could defend this championship. That's where it's at at this point. Like they are stacked. They have Noah Hannafin, and they also have Tomash. Hurtle. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. It, it really is. And they had Jack Eichel come back, and Marsha Soul is on a hot streak. Thank you. Because you got him in fantasy. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, yeah. So it's it's really tough, especially out in the West. But in the East is really where we're going to have to like hunker down and see if we can beat. I think we can beat most Western teams. It's the East I'm scared of. Because Panthers, I mean, Toronto, they could end up just being that team that ends up beating us. And then... You know, but you also got New Jersey that's trying to make a playoff push, and if they do, if they stay hot enough, they can go through. But you still got the Rangers, you still got, you know, Carolina. You got way too many teams that you got to worry about right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's never an easy field. I mean, they're just going to, you just got to hope and pray that you're, you're one step better than the next team. I mean, and that's what happened last year with us. I mean, we were the top team, but that team just had that Cinderella thing going on where they were like, you know what, we believe. And it just takes, you know, all you got to do is believe. And if the Bruins get it in their head, hey, look, we can do this, then, um, you know, they get the talent. Yeah, and I, we can do this. It, it's it's just the team itself. We got to get pieces. We have to get a first-line center. We have to try to do something for this team. Yeah, I 100% agree. You know, is Sweeney, is Sweeney going to do it, though? You know, I mean, he, Sweeney, uh, the press conference Sweeney said, you know, he, he was kind of like, you know, well, we don't have draft capital. We don't have 
this. We have a cash strap. We just have a little bit of money and we can only do a certain amount of things. And, you know, he's, he acknowledges the fact that as a fan, he sees how we're frustrated and, you know, devastated by this. But he also knows that, you know, we can't be mad at him because last year he tried his hardest to get us a Stanley Cup. No, he definitely did. 2019 was definitely his best attempt. But, you know, the fan base is definitely just fed up at this point. And, you know, it shows no matter on Facebook or Twitter. So at this point, it's it's a done deal. And, you know, and I'm sure he doesn't think he has much longer if he can't provide like a deep playoff run or at least, you know, close to a Stanley Cup. Yeah, because year after year, it's like, we're there, we're done, we're there, we're done, we're there, we're done. F- listen, we're, New England fans are fickle. We don't like that. We want, listen, we want the whole enchilada. Yeah, and especially after 2015's debacle with most of those draft picks that we could have had, it's like, you know, granted that was like, but what, like about nine years ago or so? He's yeah. been here for a good long time. Yeah, yeah as a player and as a, a GM, so. Yeah. He, he remembers this stuff. We yeah. remember it, and. You know, that still leaves the baddest taste in our mouth. Yeah, New England fans don't forget. I mean, like, we've been spoiled, though. Like, we had the Red Sox, the, the Celtics. We had the the Patriots and the Bruins. And we were doing it. We were, like, we were the t- t- title town. We were the, we were those people. And then, you know, like, the Bruins just, I don't know what happened. We had the teams, and we just, we just couldn't get over the hump. I mean, and if we just kept on choking. Yeah, that, that was the worst part because just seeing that, you never want to see that as a fan. No, no, because, like, you get your hopes up, and you just see this powerhouse of a Bruins team. You're like, oh, my God, we're just going to ransack people. When we face them, we're going to kill them. And then, like, it's like, what are you, what, what are you doing? You're playing? No, stop. No, uh, how can you lose this? Stop it. No. <laughs> no kidding. I hate it, too. It, it's very frustrating, and your blood pressure is, like, through the roof when you're watching these games, which is for, always fun, which what you want in a hockey game. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, I'm not mad. Like, I'm mad we lost, but, you know, a lot of last year, like I don't know what happened in the playoffs. Like, like it seemed like the like lackluster playing of the players was pissing me off because I'm like, wait a minute, this other team is like trying their hardest to beat you, and you're not giving the effort you should, and you're high played players, and you guys just had the best record ever, and you're skating like la di da la di da, and you're just. I don't know. That was what made me mad. Like, it was just the lackluster attempts by them to, like... like... Yeah, because they were very lenient with this big old 3-1, and one, you know, record. And it's like, they should have went out with killing mentality. When you're in a Game 7 as well, it's like, go out there and play your hardest. Granted, yes, a couple few guys were injured, but, like, we gotta play. Yeah, it's the it's the playoffs. You, I mean, you know, like, playoffs? Playoffs? Yeah, it's the playoffs. And you gotta, you gotta kill yourself. If you really want to win, you gotta give it all and if you're not giving it all then you know you don't deserve to be there and you're going to get taken out and that's exactly what happened you got taken out exactly so this year is a learning experience for montgomery and you know sweeney can only do so much of course because in cap space hell so we're definitely going to see what happens but i am at the cusp of hopefully next year that we have 25 million in cap space that we use some of it for you know good building material Oh yeah, that's a lot of money. So, like, especially in ho- in hockey, that's a lot of money. If it was the NFL, NBA, and uh, MLB, that wouldn't be a lot of money. But in hockey, twenty five million is a lot of money, and you can get good players for that. Yeah, and you know, granted, the uh, salary cap is going to get raised. Um, pretty much, though, you know, you're going to be pretty much seeing another million dollar cap space. So it's eighty three point five million or something like that. Yeah, so, I mean. They're catching up to the other sports, I mean, and you're going to have to stop paying the players. But you know what? You can't be mad because it's hockey, and these dudes kill themselves, and they deserve it. I mean... They literally skate around with knives on their feet. Yeah. How many people have died from, like, the skates hitting their juggler? I mean, like, on the ice? Yeah, we definitely have one recent one, which has still kind of been talked about a bit, but, you know, that's... Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I mean, any sport where your life is in danger, you should get paid a little more than someone that doesn't have that. And um, that's just my thought. I think the hockey players deserve way more than what they make. And that's just my opinion. Uh, if, you're, if you're a hockey player, listen to this. Um, I hope I have your support on that because uh, it just makes sense for you to be paid what you're worth. Oh, absolutely. Especially when you take those big old hits and whatnot. Oh, man. Nicholas Lidstrom of Detroit Red Wings would be the guy that lays you out and your head is bouncing off that, you know, ice. So that is definitely not fun. Yeah, and like you hear all the time about football players getting CTE. I guarantee you there's hockey players that had CTE. Oh, yeah, plenty of them, I'm sure. Yeah. 
So I don't have anything else to add to this, Liam. Uh, you got anything else? Not really, but I mean, at the same time, you know, I was thinking about the other teams around, you know, with the trade deadline. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, Vegas made a big old splash and went ahead and got Hurdle and Hannafin. And pretty much, though, Florida definitely stacked up on goaltend, goaltender, sorry, goal scoring. Um, Vladimir Tarasenko. Yeah. He went yeah. off the other night. He had about two goals and an assist, and he was just on fire. He's happy. He's in a new town that's ready to go for a cup as well. So that's dangerous. Yeah. I mean, when you get the players from teams that aren't doing good and they, you put them on like a team that's like making a run for the cup, you see the excitement come back into them. You see the drive. You see the desire. And that's what you want. You want those people to come in there and be like, look, I have a chance to win the whole damn thing, and I'm going to give it 100%. You know, and like that that's what we didn't get last year. And I was confused by that because we got these people and they just – Weren't, they didn't have that spark. But you watch these players on these teams now, and you can see the spark in them. And they want this. They, they want the cup. They, they're they tired of being on bad teams. And they're like, look, we're going to do this. Yeah, and especially now that we have Pat Maroon, that is definitely another man that, you know, is going to be hungry for another ring. I, I don't think three is enough for this guy because he's been on pretty decent teams of values of late, of course, like Tampa Bay, where they went back to back. But then he went to Minnesota. You know, Minnesota is like on the cusp of a rebuild slash trying to make playoffs. But they keep falling short. Yeah, and he's a tough guy, so like he can spark the Bruins to get like get the energy in there and like get them saying, "All right, we we need to step ourselves up," and that's the type of player we needed. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it, definitely when he gets all on the ice, he's gonna have a big fight. You're gonna get the crowd into it, and then you know we're just gonna ransack through the other team. So depending on when he gets back from his back surgery, who knows? It's just gonna be very much like a can't wait to see. That will be the big bad Bruins again. Yeah, pretty much. But we still need our defense, though, to play wicked good offense because, you know, it's they can play defense, but then they can't. So yeah, if, they, yeah. if you can't play defense, go try to score a goal. Go try to get it back, you know. Yeah, do something. There's, there needs to be urgency. 100%. I agree with you. Urgency. Urgency is the key. And if you guys want it, you got to go get it. Yeah, and especially with Toronto coming up the boards. And it's like home ice advantage doesn't really mean a thing in hockey at times. You can go 2-0 and at home, or you can go 0-2. And, and, you know, I'd still rather take home ice, you know, because we got the crowd into it, and, you know, they'll let it. Bruins fans lately have, like, at times let them know, you know, hey, you guys play better than this. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we, we'll get on you. We'll, we'll tell you, like, look, you're, you're, you're not meeting expectations. No, absolutely. So, with that, we got to keep, keep it up at the stadium. We got to blow the roof off this place. Because this could be actually a team that has been written off, but they could make a long playoff run, and especially with Pat Maroon in that fourth line leading the charge, being that like locker room chemistry guy to be like, guys, I don't got long. Marshy's not long. We've let's win a cup. Yep. I want my fourth one. I wanted to be with a team that hates me but will love me because I came in and helped you guys win. A hundred percent. Be the spark. Be the spark. Absolutely. That's what Lucic was supposed to be. But that fell through with his old mess of life. <laughs> yep, things happen. Oh, yeah. So it's just it's one of those things that we needed. And, you know, Frederick, he was looking like the guy, like the young kid that was going to be that goon and get that grit teeth in there. But he has turned into such a goal scorer. All those times with pasta on the ice, I'm sure he's learning a thing or two. Nice. So them shots have been really nice. Yeah, And he's nice. looking like he could be like a Lucic. Back from 2011, 2012, scoring about 20, 25 goals, you know, a season and helping with the assists. Hell yeah. That's what we need. We need, we need goal scorers and we need tough guys. So, we, you know, we got the tough guys, so let's keep going. Yeah, and then, then we get the motto of, you know, being the big bad Bruins again. Which I wouldn't mind. Yeah, me neither. Okay. I grew up with that. 2009 was probably my favorite year because that was the year of uh, good old hockey time in Boston with uh, – Dallas Stars, love that rivalry. Yes, yep, yep. I'd like to see. I just want to see us be back to like the glory. Not, we don't have to be like exactly like the glory days, but we just like be the Bruins you're supposed to be. I mean, just show some grit. Just you know, beat someone up. Yeah. Especially like Swayman can't do it all himself. Man can't fight everybody. Defend the net. <laughs> That's the big thing. Yeah. So hopefully with Peaky back to him or Peak. I've, Hopefully, and I'm butchering the name. But either way, hopefully, he's going to be that net for front. 
presence and protects Waven. I hope so. So I got nothing else. You got anything else? No, I think that's it, man. All right, this is great. I was glad to have you back on. And like I said, it's been a while, but we're back to another Bruins talk. And Liam's also on the retail one we just did. So that's going to be fun. So if you listen to that, then you'll listen to Liam. And I'll have pictures of us on our uh, on our website, washappening.com. You can see what these people look like. So you can be like uh, put the faces to the na- uh, the voices. So uh, please tune into us wherever you get your podcast fix. Uh, hit the subscribe and like. And Tune in next time to What's Happening.